Hi guys, uh, Moses uh, from uh, MrBenetti.com and uh, the uh, YouTube channel Mr. Benetti, also a prolific contributor to the Facebook Electrostatic Machines group and the Tesla Coil and High Voltage group. Uh, I'm here to talk about taking uh, current readings off your electrostatic generator and I'm going to focus a lot on disk style generators, particularly the class of machines that uh, uh, used to be called uh, uh, influence machines. We now don't use the term influence anymore. We would call them induction generators, but they were typically called the influence machines. And uh, they're a class of uh, disk, disk uh, rotating disk electrostatic generators uh, that were uh, typically uh, manufactured back in the... Uh, 19th century and used for quack medicine all the way up to driving x-ray tubes which they were often used before uh, uh, transformers uh, to power x-ray tubes and voltage multipliers became the, the way to do it. Uh, again if you have uh, another type of static electricity generator for instance a flat belt generator like a Van de Graaff you can use the same formula to calculate what the theoretical output of your machine should be, uh, be except that uh, the section that shows you the active charge area of your machine, in this case, you see pi times r max squared minus r min squared. If you don't remember that from your grade school geometry, the formula for area of a circle is pi r squared. So here's pi r squared minus another pi r squared. Uh, you're basically subtracting the areas of two circles on the round machine because you're not using the entire surface of the disk to collect charge. You're usually only using a ring of the disk to collect charge. There's at very least a hub or a boss in the center, and at very least you're not using that area. Usually you're uh, away from that area a little bit, and you have a bit of a margin. So there's a there's a center circle of area that's not being used to collect charge. And so you have to calculate the area of the charge ring or charge donut on the machine if it's a round machine. And that's what this is. If you are using a, uh, taking readings from let's say a flat belt machine or a Van de Graaff generator, you'd basically take the length of the belt. If it was disconnected uh, and the width of the belt, assuming you're using the entire width to collect charge, uh, your width would calculation would be obviously smaller if you're not using the entire width of the belt. And it would just be a length times width area calculation. The units must be for this formula in meters. So if you're measuring in centimeters or millimeters, convert to meters before you plug into this formula. Uh, so that's the difference. If you're using a cylindrical machine like one of those rotating bottle tile type of machines, just look up the uh, formula if you don't remember it for area of the uh, surface of a uh, cylinder. And that, that, that area would be your area that you'd plug into this formula to calculate what the maximum theoretical current output of your machine is. The reason we're calculating the maximum theoretical output is so when we start to actually taking the readings later on in this video, we're going to see how close we come, our machine comes to what it should be producing or could potentially produce. Basic uh, and see how well built our machine is, which is one of the reasons you might want to read current from your machine. Uh, so again, uh, like I said, uh, if you're using a round machine like a Bonetti, Wimshurst, Voss machine, Toppler, Holtz machine, this would be the formula uh, for the charge uh, for a round machine. Again, units are meters here. Uh, this F here is frequency in terms of turns or revolutions per second, not per minute, revolutions per second. And Pmax is a constant of 26.55 microcoulombs per square meter. Uh, that number comes uh, from uh, the uh, constant, which is the permittivity of uh, electricity in a vacuum, which happens to be very close to the permittivity of uh, electricity in a open air. We're talking about open air machines, which are very, very inefficient, as you'll see. Uh, not machines that are sealed in insulating gases like hydrogen or something else. Because uh, when you start doing that, you build machines that are not only much more efficient. Uh, Felici showed in the 1960s that you can produce a machine that's 98% efficient by simply... Uh, I, he did a lot of other things, but one of his things was sealing his machine in hydrogen gas. Uh, there was a lot of other things that made his machine efficient. But uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about open-air static electricity generators of all type. 
And like I said, the reason you'd want to calculate the current before you take the actual readings is to know what the theoretically maximum output of your machine is and to see how close you come to it. Uh, again, I talk about the late Dr. Antonio uh, de Quiros. He is probably the leading researcher, did more work on this in the 20th and 21st century than anybody alive. Uh, his website lives on. Unfortunately, he does not. He passed away in October. It was a big loss. His uh, Facebook group, Electrostatic Machines, thank God, still lives on, as well as uh, his website from the university in, in Brazil where he taught electrical engineering. Uh, and it's a wealth of information. I highly recommend it. And this formula comes from there, and he explains exactly how he came up with this constant, uh, if you're interested in that. So again, if we're talking about a round machine, R-max uh, and R-min must be measurements that you make in meters and not in uh, centimeters or millimeters. Uh, R-max is the, uh, if you're talking about a Wimshurst machine, for instance, it would be the outer edge of your uh, what your uh, your sector uh, that would determine the larger radius, the R max radius, and the inside edge of your uh, sector would be the R min. That would be the uh, the uh, outer edge of the circle that determines the uh, lower edge of your sectors, or the or it'd be the width of the active area on your neutralizers. In the case of a sectorless uh, Bonetti style machine. Uh, the reason you're subtracting two, the area of two circles is, because, like I said, you're not necessarily using the entire surface area. You've got at least a hub or a pulley or something in the center. You're definitely not using that area. And usually there's a little bit of margin of area. You're not using two. So you basically want, you're basically taking the two circles that define the maximum circle and the minimum circle, subtracting them, and you get a charge ring. That's the active area of your machine. Again, flat machines, it'll be just a length times width calculation. Cylindrical machines, the area of the surface of a cylinder. And it, of course, you're talking about the active area that you're using if you're not using the entire surface area. F, again, is frequency of the machine in terms of revolutions per second, not revolutions per minute. And again, P max is this uh, 26.55 micro, micro coulombs per meter squared. All right. Again, uh, we're going to talk later in this uh, whiteboard presentation, we're going to talk about uh, uh, using the uh, uh, measurements from my own machine. My machine is a quadruple Bonetti machine. The reason it's called a quadruple Bonetti machine is, is because instead of single disc pairs like you would have on a normal machine, I have four sets of discs, eight discs in total. Uh, which is the equivalent of taking uh, four normal double disc uh, sectorless Wimhurst machines and connecting them together in parallel. Normally you would expect when you do that to simply get four times the current output of the single machine. You actually get a lot more. I'm going to discuss that in a minute. Okay. And again, here I talk about uh, the current on a flat belt machine, a Van de Graaff, and I talk about how the formula changes. As you notice, the only thing that changes in the formula is that pi r squared calculation becomes just a length times width calculation because you're looking at a flat belt only. All right, and down here, let's see if we can move this just into the view. Now, we're talking about an example. My disc and my machine, it used to be built out of uh, vinyl uh, uh, LP records. Uh, they were 12 inches. Uh, I've since replaced those records because uh, they work quite well, except uh, records tend to be a little flexible and uh, you can't get them running flat and not touching each other. Uh, they do tend to flex, especially when charge builds up on them. So now I have... Uh, uh, Perspex, which is the uh, European equivalent of plexiglass uh, discs. There's 30 centimeters in diameter, close enough to the foot that the records were. Uh, and I have eight of those discs, you know, uh, making basically a quadruple Bonetti machine, as I mentioned. So we're going to plug 
what you get out of my machine into the formula. One thing I didn't mention is that that formula IMAX is what you would get out of uh, if you had a machine like a top or hulch machine where you only have one rotating disc and you have a uh, induction plate that doesn't move. Uh, that would be the current you get out of your top, the maximum current you can get out of your Toppler Hulch machine. Most people think, oh, I have a Wim Search machine or I have a Benetti machine. I have two discs. They're both the same. I'm getting twice the current. So my output would be two IMAX from a machine. In actuality, no, you only get IMAX out of a normal Benetti or a normal, uh, 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 out of a normal Wim Search machine. A Benetti machine uh, are much more efficient and for a number of reasons you get two IMAX out of your one disc, but you don't get, normally you don't get current out of both sides, you only get current out of one side, the other side becomes a rotating induction plate. The reason for that, if you look at most Wimshurst or uh, Bonetti style machines, you see that the uh, charge collectors are typically horseshoe shaped combs that sit dead center on both sides, uh, so the uh, both both discs on the same side, uh, the uh, charge collector is exactly the same point on the disc. Because of inevitable capacitance differences between the two discs, no matter how hard you try, you always have a difference. One side has slightly more capacitance, the other side has slightly less. You run into the machine acting like a bit of a, uh, uh, a uh, capacitive voltage divider. One side, the side with the higher capacitance is going to have a slightly lower voltage than the side with the uh, lower capacitance and all the current is going to come off the side with the higher voltage and none of the current is going to be contributed from the side with the lower voltage. Uh, there is a way to double the output and that uh, means making adjustable uh, charge collectors so each half of the same charge collector can be angled towards the nearest neutralizer. That will maximize the output and you'll get double the current output of the machine. So on a, a Wim service machine, instead of getting IMAX, you get two IMAX off your machine. Bonetti machines, which are more efficient and get two IMAX off of each disc anyway, you'll now get four IMAX off your uh, single paired Bonetti machine if you do what I do and you'll see later on in my video, I'll show my machine in detail. You'll see how I have my uh, neutralizers able to be angled and they are angled and as a result, and you'll see with my measurements, I'm actually getting uh, massive amounts of current out of that machine. Uh, as you see here, uh, my R max happens to be 0.145 meters and my R min is 0.1145 meters. That's because I have a 10 millimeter margin around the top edge, which you see on Bonetti machines and you see on one surface machines all the time. Your sectors on a one person machine almost never go to the top edge of the machine. There's always a little bit of a margin. So I've calculated that in. That gives me a 0.145 meters uh, of the radius on my uh, larger radius, my smaller radius is 0.1145 meters because my neutralizer brushes are 61 millimeters long. They're actually a tiny bit more, but we're going to round it to 61 millimeters. Uh, I've also calculated my uh, frequency uh, at 3000 RPM because I know I can run my machine at 3000 RPM and that gives an F of 50 revolutions per second for the formula. So here I plug in my 3000 RPM speed, which is the 50 uh, revolutions per second. I plug everything in and it, as you can see, I, my IMAX of my machine is roughly 33 microamps. Now I also say down here that the total output I should be able to get from my machine at 3000 RPM is 28 times IMAX. And the first thing you're thinking of 28 times IMAX, how is that even possible? And I'm going to tell you why. I mentioned that uh, on a Benetti machine, they're, tep 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 they're typically twice as efficient as a worm source machine. So instead of IMAX, you get two IMAX off the machine. And if you did the neutralizer adjustments that I talked about, you're now getting four IMAX off your Benetti machine. When you start talking about multiple machines where you have multiple disc pairs on the same machine, as long as the disc pairs are close enough, like you'll see they are on my machine, you tend to get double the output on the inside disc because uh, there's a lot of shielding going on. 
uh, and you also get uh, some of the benefit of the uh, electrical charge repulsions that keep the charges on the disc and uh, help the charges not to bleed out into the air as fast as they would normally. So you actually, uh, on all the inner discs, instead of getting two IMAX off of each of the discs, you're getting four IMAX. So if you take the two, uh, two outer discs of my machine, remember I got eight discs all together, take the two outer discs, you're getting two IMAX, so that would be two times the 33 microamps here for the two outer discs, giving a total of four times 33 microamps. And then if you take the remaining six inner discs at four IMAX each, you're getting 24 IMAX uh, off the inner disc combined. That's 24 times IMAX, and uh, for the four on the eight, two outer discs, it gives you a total of 28 times IMAX. So with my machine that produces 33 microamps uh, IMAX times the 28, uh, I should be able, at 3,000 RPM, I should be able to produce approximately 924 microamps off the machine. And I have uh, produced at higher RPMs, I've gotten the machine up to 1.2 milliamps. So uh, that's not very far off from the maximum my machine is capable of producing. So we're going to go test it in a minute, and we're going to see how close we get to that at 3,000 RPM. Uh, you're probably asking yourself, how do I uh, know what speed my machine's running at? And we're going to use a, a little Chinese-made uh, optical uh, a meter to measure the uh, RPMs uh, coming off the machine, and we'll know that we're going 3,000 RPM. So... Uh, We'll see you in the second half of this video and uh, see you soon.